seems legit. Hello, legitimates. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are making the Andrew Trifle Wallet by Lynn's Handmade. Um, it is a raw edge pattern, uh, and you will be using. You need to use like non-fraying fabric, so waterproof canvas, leather, vinyl. I have gone with leather and waterproof canvas for mine. Uh, it is super cute. So you've got this section up here that is for notes, um, and that is just the back of your exterior, whatever you may be using. You've got a little coin section here. You've got two card slot sections here and here, and an ID window as well. So if you would like to see how to make this, whoops, now I can't do it up. Ha! Yes, I can. Please stay tuned. Hello everybody, as you can see we are at my cylinder arm with my very cool table that my husband built me. Um, so I've got here, I've actually attached, let me put my fingers on them to hide the sizings, but I've actually got all the pieces clipped to it so I know what's going on. So we're going to take card slot 1, which is this one, and card slot 2. Card slot one requires, we're going to draw some lines on. So we're going to take card slot one and we're going to draw a line. Along both edges, so top and bottom. My stuff is non-directional. feels so weird to be up this high. Alright, so I've drawn my two lines on card slot one. Then we're going to grab some double-sided tape. I am using up my um, one I got from Spotlight. I'm trying to just use up the last of the tape I have so that I can move on and permanently use the cool new stuff. So, we've got this on card slot piece one. No wait, we only needed one, hold on. Take both card slot one and card slot two, draw a hollow of the line from the top edge of both pieces, and then we need the bottom edge of card slot two. So I don't need this one. Now I've got to pick the double-sided tape off. Fun times. It does come off, it's just fiddly. I thought I was getting confused. Right, so this one gets folded to the line. Like so. This is my thick waterproof canvas in army green. I love this colour. I'm just picking off the last of that tape. Okay, so that's that one. Card slot two. Now I do both sides of this one. Because it's the bigger piece, which makes way more sense. One. And two. Double sided tape. You can use a thinner tape if you want. We're putting all the rubbish in the bin as we go because I don't like mess. Alright, so we fold that one, then we're going to do the same to the other side. You're folding it up to the line. Like that. So now we've got one with two folded and one with one folded. And then we're going to top stitch along that edge. So I'm going to lift up the foot. I'm going to go this way so that the feet, the foot here actually pulls the thing through. Oh, I forgot to connect the um, wheel to the machine. So we're just stitching along the top edge, the back stitch, and we're going to stitch along the top edge of this one. So I'm just going to add it in. I do definitely sew slower on this machine than the other one. Uh, but 
I think that's just because I don't use it as much. Okay, trim off those tails. Pull that out, trim off those tails. So that's those bits done. So they should now be the same size. So just check them with each other. They should be the same size, which they are. Now I'm going to grab my clear ID window and the ID trim. Now I'm using leather for this because I thought it would be pretty. I don't think I'm wrong. Uh, so what I am going to do though is I am just going to fold this in half to help give it an even crease for when I go to put it on my ID window. And then again with more double sided tape, I'm just going to pop it right in the center like so. And snip. So I've got all the way along, we've put double sided tape. I'm going to peel that off and then pop it in the center. You can draw a line if that's more helpful. Oop. That was not quite the center. So the other way you can do it is hold it so you've got the crease and then just slot it on. Like so. And it'll stick because we put the sticky tape right down the middle. So I'm now going to stitch and again I think I want to go this way. We're going to stitch, back stitch. Ooh or not. If it doesn't want to back stitch, we're just going to go normally. Oh, what was that? Those kind of noises always scare me, just FYI. Just gonna chop those out because those stitches are not actually helpful to me. All right, let's try that again. Pull some thread through. What's going on there? I possibly should have made something on this before I just come home and plug it straight back in in case there were issues. I just assumed they'd be fine. Josh is amazing with machines. Oh. Let's try that again. So that is now the ID window attached with some leather. And we are on to the next section. So we need to now take our coin pocket bottom, which I've done in leather, and the coin pocket top, also leather. And I like to clip all my pieces together uh, just because it's And then we want, oh, I think I want a darker brown for this because now that I've put that up against it, I don't think I want that. Fine. I decided to go with black with a gold zipper because it looks cool. So now I'm going to take my tails, put them behind, grab the zipper, and we're going to put right sides together. And you can clip this if you want to. like so. And we're just going to stitch next to the zipper. Oh, I even just did back stitching as an automatic thing. Okay, then I'm going to fold this up and I'm going to top stitch that down. So again, tails behind us, needle in, back into the first hole. Right. So that's 
the top edge done and fabulous. Now we're going to do the bottom edge. So again, grab some clips if you want to. It's not very big, so you don't have to clip it if you don't want to. Um, pull it out. Again, with the back stitching. Apparently, I'm not scared of back stitching on here anymore. And then fold that down onto itself, and then we're going to top stitch that down as well. So you're just going to be conscious, because of the type of foot I've got in, it's only got feet on one side, like the extra foot, so I have to do it from a certain way. Oops. I have a sneaking suspicion that's way too tight. Thread the machine. See, this is why you should test the machine when you get it back. I'm just guessing it's fine. Alright, we're going to take a zipper pull and now put it on. I always like my zippers closing to the left, so that's what I plan on doing. But you can do it however you like. zipper on, I'm going to kind of put it in the middle so it stays out of our way. So there's a bunch of our pieces done. Let's go to the next part. Done that. We're not doing the... I'm not doing the Velcro, so we're skipping over that step. We're going to grab our inner piece, which is this one here. And we're going to take our ID window first and attach it to the edge like this. So I'm mainly just attaching it in the corners like so. And then we're going to draw two lines with something probably erasable would be best. So from this edge, I actually need to move those clips because I won't be able to draw it with it there. So from this edge, we're going to draw one line and then another line. And this is placement for our card slots. So the first one, firstly, I'm going to re-clip these. And then, so we want to grab the one that doesn't have the folded over edge, so card slot one, and put it at the top line, and then we're going to stitch that down from this way. Normally I would have bulk side out, but I need the feet to touch here. So, needle in, stitch, back stitch, forward stitch, off we go, and back stitch. Now you won't see this stitching, but you should still always strive to have it pretty. Oops, using my bin for the laptop holder was not the smartest move I've ever had. Now we're going to take this one and the folded edge will go onto the second card slot space, like so, and then we're going to stitch that one down. Oop. There we go. Right, line it up along that line, needle down, stitch. Back stitch. Move that tail out of the way. And then top stitch that bottom edge. Beautiful. I do love brown and army green together. So now we've got our card slots on and we've got our ID window sitting there. Next up, I imagine, is the other end. So we're going to grab this piece here and pop this here like so. 
Now I'm going to line up the bottom edge first. Oops. You don't have to use leather. You can use any kind of non-fraying fabrics for this. So you can use all waterproof canvas or you could use, I don't know, whatever you like really. I'm not the boss of you. Whoa, laptop just had a meltdown. And then we're gonna grab this piece and hold it down and stitch it there. So we need to stitch this shut, otherwise all your coins can escape. So again, we're gonna take all of these at the back. I might actually take that one off. And I'm gonna stitch this top edge. One, two, back into the first hole, and then off we go. That is now attached there. Do they want us to stitch the whole way around? Oh, I think they do. Okay. So let's now stitch the edges. So we're gonna hold down all the card slots and just pretty much everything. So, because of the type of foot I've got in, I actually wanna come and do this side which I know is opposite to what I normally do, but it's the type of foot I've got attached on here and I'm not changing it now. Take off the clips as you come through them. Sometimes I have to go slow when it comes to bulkier sections. That was just the feet. Clip off. Needle down. Pivot. Well, did I make it? I didn't quite make it to the edge, so we'll do one more. There we go. Clips off. And again, I missed by like half a stitch. Slowly through the bulk. It usually helps you cause. Take the clips off, and again, we're getting to a bulky part. Sometimes I just have to hand crank it just a little bit. And I'm gonna fold this over so it doesn't hit this part here. And then down the end. machine probably but that's also probably because I don't play with this machine as often so I've now got a whole bunch of parts attached there's not many parts left actually there's like what three so now we are going to take our interior trim which is this long random skinny piece And I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to fold it in half and then over the edge, but the top edge. So this side here. So we're going to take some double side tape, pop it down the middle like we did earlier. And again, you can make this piece out of um, waterproof canvas. It doesn't have to be the leather. I was just trying to give off some nice leather accents.
peel off the backing, pop the backing back in the bin. And then, so it's going to go on here and then fold over the top like this. And you may or may not need some clips in certain areas. I'm just going to add some clips because I don't think it's going to clip uh, stay there as well as it wants to. Alright, clipped it down. Now we're going to take our zip. And I'm going to put my little zipper tab end on the end. And then do I want to zip it towards or behind? So we want to put the zipper pull on first. Depends on which way you want your zipper to go. But you put your zipper tab, or your zipper pull on first. Like that. And then this is the end we're going to put the tab on. So we're going to put it right sides together. And stitch. These bits are always tricky on this machine. Does not lock these at all. But it's going to do it because I said so. Through the teeth and off the end. Okay. Like that. going to take this and it's going to go that way and then underneath. Oh, I didn't need the zipper tab. You could do it without it. Apparently I'm going to do it with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some double sided tape along this bottom edge here. Not this one. We need a skinnier one. I've got an eighth of an inch tape. This is the fabulous stuff from the Ghana sewing room. This is what I will be replacing all my zipper tape with. I just have to work through the rest of it, but I don't have an eighth of an inch in any other brand. So that's gonna work out. And this stuff, this is why we like this, you can tear it. You don't have to snip it. It will be a habit that's gonna take me a minute to get out of. But once I do, it's gonna be amazing. So we're going to pick off the backing, pop it in, and then up along this edge, I'm going to stick the zipper down so that all the layers are together, right? You're going to have to move your clips for this. Hopefully your other sticky tape's now doing its job and holding properly. as even as it could be. Down here you can go down just a little bit. That's better. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch all of those together. And let me just tell you, this would definitely have been easier if I didn't make this piece leather. But I have I have no plans on changing it. I think it looks cool and that's the whole point. Why only do easy things? I am however gonna go very slowly, especially here. So the big, where it goes up a hill, this machine really does struggle. And it could just be my foot. It doesn't like to go uphill very much. So again, we're getting close to the zipper, so it needs some help to get over it. 
otherwise, as you can see, it doesn't crawl as well as it should. It gets stuck. Backwards. And up. So now all the layers are together. Looks fabulous. And now I'm just going to chop off this excess little bit of zipper here. Now I've scribbled out the sizing of this, we need to mark the snap placement on the outside. So, I'm going to lay this down. You can even lay it down upside down so you can't see all the measurements. That's also fine. And then, oh, here it is. I'm going to grab this and just mark the holes. So the whole reason we use this is because then I don't have to measure things. So that's that done. Now we need to go over and punch the holes. So let's move. All right, so I have punched the holes with my cam press die. Now we're going to take the press parts and we're gonna put the, these ones. I've actually put the wrong ones in now that I look at it. So we're gonna take the, the small parts so this, 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 but just to reinforce this, I'm actually going to grab two pieces of stabilizer, all my little scraps of stabilizer, I cut into one inch squares. And I'm just going to punch a hole roughly in the middle of both of them at the same time. And then from the back, we're going to put through this part, then attach it through the hole and attach them on that way. So this will give um, added stability so that you won't just rip through your snap presses because you never know how rough someone's gonna be with that item. Especially if this was like a kid, they're not gonna be gentle with the presses, they're just gonna rip it open because it's fun. So, take this piece, push it through, then through the back here. And that will just give it a little bit more stability and make it last longer. On we go. Okay, so now I've got those presses on because these are the inside ones and then the outside ones will come over like this. So the other half is for the outside. So let's go back and continue. So here's through. where your double-sided tape is gonna come in handy. So I just want to put it along all the edges here, right at the edge. Try not to come away from that. And there is reasons for this. This is going to hold it together the best. You can also, I mean, you can't put glue here because you will, um, this is a zipper pocket. So this is the back of your zipper pocket which I've also just realized is gonna make those look funny. Um, I don't have a real solution to that. Let me think about it. So this is gonna open up and you're gonna see those. So what I might do then is just trim this down a lot because you will see this, it's just occurred to me. I still stand by my stabilizer plan because people still are rough. But I'm just chopping most of the excess off so it's just around the actual snap. That will not look as bad on the inside of the wallet. I'm also gonna put double-sided tape on the short edges. I want all edges to hold where they're told. Oh, I'm rhyming today. Now we've got this, we can pick the backing off, all of them. If you can do fancy things with um, double-sided tape, you could probably have this all as one piece. I am not that skilled, so we're just gonna do that. Okay. So then we're gonna just line this up inside, in the middle, like this. 
So it should fit just inside all of your double sided tape that you've just done. And then we're just going to fold over those edges and clip it down. You can start from wherever. The other thing we want to do is I don't want a lot of bulk in this corner. As you can see, me and this machine don't get along well with bulk. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do each side a little bit. And you can do it a couple of ways. I like to, because I'm lazy, pinch it together like this. Alright, so you've got this bit sticking up. And then you can just trim it so it's even. It's that simple, right? Ta-da! And then put a clip there so they don't move. Um, otherwise, you can measure out the square in the corner if that's more your cup of tea. If you looked at that and were horrified, that's okay. It's not for everybody. I'm going to put on a lot of clips, though. I'm going to hold this nice and together. And clips are your friend in holding things together. I'm actually going to need a tub with more clips. So I've just grabbed my Lord of the Rings bowl, which I absolutely love. And then, so once we do the second corner, I'm just going to fold this over here and clip it in place so it can't shift. And then I'm going to pinch these corners together till they come together properly. Like that. You see how I've now pinched it so that they're coming together there and then we've just got this sticky uppy bit. And then I'm going to take my scissors and cut it off so it's even. Ta-da! And then put a clip on it so it doesn't shift. Now again, this might not be the way you want to do it. You might want to cut out the corner, but I promise it always works. As crazy as it might be, my way does work. So again, now we're going to fold over the zipper. Like that. This corner is going to be fun to sew. over and then clip this side and then pinch that corner till it comes together and then trim clip cross the zipper hello knuckles quite a lot of clips and then again this last one I'm gonna pinch it and then take these and trim it off so that they sit flat now if you're not using leather and you're making the outside in waterproof canvas you can instead fold the corners yes knuckles you can fold the corners if that's more your thing. Um, that's worked out really, really well, I think. Okay, so now we're going to stitch it. What we don't want to do, which is what I did with the first one, is start in a corner. I know that sounds whatever, but just trust me on this. So I'm going to lift this up. Yes, Knuckles? Very needy puppy dog, don't you? Do you want to go outside? Alright, so we're going to come over, and because, again, my foot's bulkier on this side to help me hold everything, we're going to come, and I'm going to stitch from here. So we're going to stitch. Oh, no, we're not going to stitch. Just lost my thread again. And it's still very tight. Nearly, nearly. I'm also going to move my bowl so that I don't drop everything. I think my dog's just going to sit next to me till I let him outside. So maybe I'll go and do that and then we can stitch around. Right, I popped him outside. Let us stitch around here. And we're going to go nice and slow. Not that I can go fast on this machine. 
It's not in my skill set yet. We're going to get to this corner, needle down, and then we're going to pivot. Then I'm going to have to hand crank this bit because it's thicker. Hold all this up. Continue on. Get to the corner. long tails if you want you can pull them through and tie them off because I didn't back stitch here and I can do it now because everything's out of my way so I'm going to just tie these off one and two Oop, no that was not two that's two and three and then I'm going to thread zap them away because thread zappers are awesome. Oh no, I think he's dead. Oh, he needs a new battery. Okay. So never mind, I will get to that. Why did I slow down? Because there was zipper tape and I wanted it to behave itself. to like the other side in your little corner and again a lot of this now that I've clipped it on for a few minutes the clips uh, the double-sided shape tape should have taken hold right so it doesn't want to go over this big bump this was always going to be my problem corner and that's okay just going to manually crank it because it doesn't want to behave itself. And then home stretch. Make sure you've got your zipper pull down out of the way. And then when you get back to the start, you're just going to back stitch and forward stitch a little bit. Ah, that looks pretty good. So, we're not finished though. I'm going to go and do a second stitch all the way around, closer to the edge. Because I want to, and I think it will be pretty. Now again, I do not want to start in a corner. Oh, I hate that noise, mainly because I don't know what it is. a little bit, not going to lie. Right, and then we're up to the thick part again. because there's nothing there to disturb anything unless you let your um, zipper pull get in your way. Pivot. Right, so again, it's a thick bit and it doesn't want to go through. Needle 
then pivot, arm stretch. I don't know why I decided to stuff Rodney a zipper, but that's all right. That worked out pretty well. So that's going to give more stability and it does look neater, right? So that like nice two stitch. I don't know if you can see that in the light. So the last step is, oops, that way. We need to put in our press studs. Uh, so let's go back over to the press stud machine. Okay, we are at the press stud machine. So I'm going to take my ruler. So you can do this two ways. One, you can just fold it and work out where the press studs go that way. Like that. Which is there and there. Because you want them to line up. They also have the measurements on there we go so they also have the measurements in the pattern sometimes I do just find that easier though one and wait where's my other mark gone there two oops dropped it of course I did of course I did Okay, so then we're just going to poke these through the holes, pop it in the machine. I always like to put the top in. And squish it down. So that's one, and then you want to check and make sure that they actually press that close. That is important to check. If they don't work, uh, you're going to pull them out. Then the other one goes through here, like so. So now you can go one, two, make sure it works. And there is your wallet all done. Super cute. And then you can rip on it a little bit more because we uh, interface those. You can zip this all the way up. Maybe. What did I just do? Oh no. Something's caught somewhere. See, that's where that is uh, and you can see a little bit of that you can cut that down further if you want to um, but I do still stand by my idea to give it some more infrastructure but again you can cut it down so it's like basically the same size as the metal you just gotta get fiddly right so it's still not a big deal. The other one you can also barely see, and then it zips up. So you've got your ID window here, two card slots, and in here is where your little coins go. Super cute pattern. My top stitching is not the best for that first line. Uh, I blame the lack of use of that machine, because I'm sure I would do better on the other one. But still, super cute, little wallet. It's good for men, kids, women who don't like a lot of wallets. But anyway, that is all done. So I hope that was somewhat helpful and I will see you guys next time. Bye.